Round seven of the 2017 Brisker Formula One Stock Cars National Points Championship shootout stage, sponsored by Mintex, sees the cars roll into the Adrian Flux Arena in Kings Lynn. A fine field of 45 Brisker Formula One Stock Cars are here, with all the shootout superstars trying to knock 390 Stuart Smith off his perch at the top of the point standings. Moving on to the final for the Brisker Formula One Stock Cars, then sponsored by Neil Stutchbury Motors. Round seven of the Mintex National Points Championship shootout stage. All 32 qualifiers are out there on the grid. This should be a cracking race. We've got all the big names there. Craig Finnegan and Nigel Green are earlier. Heat winners, the consolation won by Aaron Cousins, number 76. Stuart Smith is there, the Waymans, Mark Gilbank. This is going to be a belter of a 20-lap race on the Adrian Flux Arena Shale. I'm really looking forward to this one. We always see Brisker F1 at its best here at Kings Lynn. Could we see a surprise from the white graders? We've had a win for Aaron Cousins. We've had a win for Jack France in the white and yellow grade race. We nearly had a win for Martin Chadwick in one of the heats in number 74. Beginning to rise, the green flag's about to go down. 20 laps of Brisker Formula One action. Here we go. Martin Chadwick leads them off in at number 74 already. We've got a pile up among the blue graders and we've got one over. Now, who's that that's gone over onto his side there at turn four? That's going to be a race stoppage. The red flag is out. Just trying to work out who that is. I think it's uh, Siak Kenty, the Dutchman in H179, who's ridden up the fence and fallen over onto his side. The race has been stopped straight away in the interests of safety and will be a full restart. The grid will be formed up again. Just checking that uh, it is Siak Kenzi is OK. Just so the blue graders all went wide. It was Michael Scriven spinning out that forced them out wide and then up and over onto his side went uh, Siak Kenzi, the Dutchman in H179. The marshals repositioning his car. Full credit to all the marshals here at uh, Kings Lynn. We couldn't go racing without them. Jack Kent is uh, OK. He's out of the car. I predict a riot on the uh, PA system from the stadium DJ. Looks like we've already got one. Never mind predicting one. Is there going to be another riot on this restart then? Over the full distance of 20 laps. Grid formed up once more. Take two with our meeting final. We've lost uh, Siak Kenti. He won't take the restart. We've lost a couple of other cars as well. Here they come then round towards the green once again. We get underway for the second time of asking with our Brisker F1 meeting final here at shootout stage round seven. Martin Chadwick leads them into the first hill. Already a couple of spinners. One of them is Mark Wood, and I think the other is Frankie JJ, possibly in the uh, treble five car their way into the first turn and, and we've got another one over on turns one and two a pile up on the outside now who is that uh, will hunters in there as well uh, frankie jj's in there in treble five i've been told it's bobby griffin in 166 who has uh, rolled over there so we have another red flag another first lap stoppage what's got into these drivers tonight two rollovers in the first lap of each uh, attempt at this final Craig Finnegan, who spun out earlier on uh, on that uh, restart. Yes, Bobby Griffin again just rode up the fence and over he went after being sent wide. And everybody else was piling in behind. Bob Griffin, the former national mini stocks at gold top, on his side there. A battered aerofoil, I think, the main extent of the damage. We've lost a fair few cars. Paul Hines out of the race in 259. He's had not much uh, luck at all this season. Lee Fairhurst out as well in 217, along with several others. We've lost uh, Matt Newson, Danny Wayman, Carl Hawkins, Michael Scriven, Aaron Cousins, Ben Herdman, and uh, Joran Vinans as well as our two rollovers. So plenty of cars missing from the grid for this restart. I think we're down to about 23 cars for the single file restart by my uh, head count of this grid. Here we go then, looking back from Stuart Smith. Spent most of this uh, shootout stage of the National Points Championship looking back at his uh, rivals. Looking for another final win here as the throttles go down and we are underway once again. A single file restart at this time. Smith under attack from Wayman. They go past a couple of blue tops there. James Morris and the 22 of Will Yarrow. Somebody slow away there. That is the number 12 of Michael Scriven. Looks like he's got some damage. Nigel Green under fire from Junior Wayman. 
in the 5-1-5 car. Down the back straight they go. Nigel Green attacking Stuart Smith. He gets a tap in there. Danny Waitman wallops straight in. He goes and uh, almost does uh, a Craig Thompson there riding up the fence. I thought he was going to roll over as well. And I predict to Ryan was the sock before this race, and we have certainly got one. Stuart Smith now attacking Craig Finnegan there on the back of Mark Gilbank in number 21. Nigel Green has another go at Stuart Smith. He needs to strike early here to stop Smith getting away. There's our two leaders, Martin Chadwick up front ahead of Mark Sargent. Chris Broxop is in third place, then Gerd Jan Klopp, the Dutchman fourth. Craig Finnegan is up to fifth, so the shootout superstars coming through very quickly indeed. 575 of uh, Joran Vinans goes a lap down, managed to take the restart, I thought he pulled out. He's back in there, again Nigel Green doesn't quite manage to get the bump free on Stuart Smith, he needs to fairly quickly here to get an attack in on the man who's dominated this uh, shootout stage of the Vintex National Points Championship so far. Back from Smith there is the world champion behind us. The race has settled down somewhat now after those chaotic early stages. Battle between Smith, Green, Finnegan behind them, and then we've got Junior Wayne, the British champion with the black and white checkered roof in 5 1 5. They go past Neil Scriven in number 11. Not a happy race this one for the Scriven brothers. Saw Michael in trouble early on. Both still uh, circulating though. Now coming up on Carl Hawkins in 1 7 5 as Wayneman leads. Finnegan wide there on turn three, makes the place. Towards the halfway stage, looking back from the uh, number 422 of Ben Riley, still leading the way to Martin Chadwick, and uh, Ben Riley just avoiding a spun car there out of turn two, just uh, managed to nip past on the outside. Here are the leaders. Martin Chadwick has run a bit wide out of turn two, avoiding a slowing car, and through goes Mark Sargent into the lead goes the Lincolnshire driver. Always an entertainment is the entertainer is the uh, East Coast legend. He now leads the way coming out of turn four. Still attacking, and Chris Broxop rejoined right across the bows there of Jan Klock in 152. That could have been nasty. Broxop now in between Smith and Green. Gets out of Nigel Green's way there off turn four. Now these two coming up on Gert Jan Klock, the Dutchman in 152. Giving a very good account of himself. I think it's his first time racing at uh, Kings Lynn tonight. The attack there, Mark Gilbank on the back of Ben Riley, who we ride with. Superstar lights flashing away on the 422 car. A great season Ben Riley is having. He gets bollocked straight in there by Mark Gilbank. Cuts back out again, stays ahead. He's Finnegan chasing down Waitman. Stuart Smith, not surprisingly, has done the fastest lap of the race. Waitman attacks Chris Broxop in 338. Hey, Finnegan looking for a revenge hit on Waitman for earlier on. And yet uh, Club puts away Will Hunter in 220 there into turn one. Hunter recovers and uh, will probably go for a revenge shot on the Dutchman. He's going to attack here into turn three. He's up the inside and wallop straight in we go. There's the equaliser from Will Hunter. It's England one, Holland one. Goodness me, that was a hard hit from Will Hunter. I remember him doing that to Danny Wayne but at Northampton a few years ago with uh, such force that he flipped him over. Still leading the way is Mark Sargent in 3 2 6. The forceful driver is Will Hunter, as we saw there. Instant revenge on Gert Jan Klock the hit of the race so far. Meantime, Stuart Smith is trying to catch our race leaders. I think he's caught them while that was going on. And yes, he is through into the lead now. So Martin Chadwick and Mark Sargent up there. Is it Sargent still in the lead? Smith is up there. Chasing Mark Sargent. No, apologies, it is uh, still Mark Sargent in the lead. Ahead of uh, Stuart Smith, Martin Chadwick under fire from Craig Finnegan further back. We'll pick up the leaders. In just a moment, Nigel Green is next through. Chadwick is falling back now. Good effort though tonight by the White Raider. Came close to winning his heat. Smith reeling off the fastest lap times. Let's see if he can take another win. He's caught Mark Sargent now. There is the East Coast legend still out in front. He's about to lose his lead, I do believe, because there goes Smith up the inside. This time he's got him. And into the lead goes Stuart Smith in 3 9 0, looking to extend his points lead still further. Here he comes, two laps to go. Sergeant second, Green in third. Then we've got Finnegan and Wayne, but still together in fourth and fifth places. Race calming down slightly in its closing stages after some very hard hits early on. And we're into the last lap now. Stuart Smith in 3 9 0. So the 
greatest stock car racer of them all, Stuart Smith Senior, is going to take a clear win. Mark Sargent still in second. Craig Finnegan doing the fastest lap of the race there late on. But it's a win for Stuart Smith and he'll extend his points lead at the top of the National Points Championship still further. Second place goes to Mark Sargent. Nigel Green looks like his engine blew as he crossed the line there for third place. Then Finnegan, Wayman and the rest of them come through. No stopping Stuart Smith in that meeting final. Sponsored by Neil Stutchbury Motors, he takes the win. Mark Sargent was docked two places there, from second to fourth for jumping a restart. So it's Nigel Green second and Craig Finnegan in third place. Mark Sargent docked to fourth ahead of Junior Wayneman. Total of 16 cars went the distance in that one. Fastest lap wins to Craig Finnegan. 3-9-0, Stuart Smith, final winner. You're getting closer. Yeah, uh, another final in the bag. The car were good then, better than it were in the heat. Um, I'm just doing my job, really. Just keep plucking away. We did think you might have been a target in that race, and other drivers should really have took the opportunity to get you, but you just drove away from everybody. The car's got phenomenal drive. Yeah, it's, it's easy to say that watching, you know, just throw your car at somebody and try and stop them, but when you... It, it do, it's harder for them when I'm as for quick as I am, because I know what it's like when somebody's a lot quicker than you. By the end of the straight, there's an extra car length between you, so and you can get it wrong if you're coming from a slower position. But you know, if I think they are trying, I just think that things are going my way at the minute. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll continue. You're certainly around Kings Lynn now this season. You, you and this track, you, you're married. Yeah, we've had a. A love-hate relationship. I feel like I'm married to it, yeah. But uh, no, it's it's a brilliant track. I said it on the microphone. Then um, it's, it's the best track in the country. And yeah, there's, it's a little bit quirky with the watering. We've said all that. It's, it's all said and done. Um, but the racing is generated, and to do it in front of a great crowd tonight with the saloons, it's brilliant. That's how it should be. And now you're going to start a lap down in the Grand National. You'll be able to make up some places, I would have thought. Yeah, I think so. I mean, hopefully we need uh, need a few yellow flags. If I get them, lucky enough to get them. I'll try and get a top 10 anyway. Uh, if there is no yellows, I think I'm quick enough to do that. But you do need a little bit of luck all the time. I don't want to use all my luck up yet, though. The 2017 Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Mintex National Points Championship comes to its climax here at Bellevue Stadium in Manchester on a damp but sunny Sunday afternoon. 390 Stuart Smith is set to win the Silver Ruth, but he still can mathematically be caught. Everyone will be going all out on attack on the tight and tricky shaleway here at Bellevue Stadium. The higher grades join the action then for heat number two, a big grid of 29 cars out there for this one, including in this one the world champion 445 Nigel Green, Intex National Points Championship leader, Stuart Smith in 390, British champion Frankie Wayman Jr. in 515, 217, Lee Fairhurst's out there, along with many more star names out in this one, including a number of our white and yellow graders that we've already seen in our first race. There is Nigel Green with the gold roof in 445, starting alongside Stuart Smith at the back of the shootout superstars, fighting for the National Points Championship, sponsored by Mintex Braking Systems. Mintex Braking Systems, these drivers barely use the brakes, they use the car in front of them to slow down. Down. So getting ready then for 16 laps of action. Sam Jacklin on the front of the grid in 137 along with 216 of Jack France. Here we go. Over 16 laps already. James Morris gets fired wide in 463. And among the blue graders, here we go. The shootout superstars together up towards the green flag. Then they're already pushing and shoving each other. Somebody with slower weight, Ben Riley, that is in 422. Saw him have a contretemps recently with uh, Ryan Harrison of Birmingham and Northampton. Ryan Harrison uh, not here today, slowing up there, 313 of uh, Carl Roberts. Sam Jacklin in 137, who leads 216 Jack France in second place. There's Nigel Harry, our earlier winner in 45. 169 Billy Johnson tangling up with 22 of Will Yarrow. Paul Hyde gets stuffed into the side of treble five. Frankie Wayman, Junior Junior. Frankie JJ, his father, Junior Wayman, goes through to chase Stuart Smith in 390, who's already carving his way through the opposition, as we've seen so often this year. Uh, somebody's lost a wheel there. Who does that belong to? Number 17 of Bouvet, Ayan Hidinga. The Dutchman runs over it. And I think we're going to see a caution flag there because of a loose wheel on the raceway. Indeed, we are. Don't know who's lost the wheel there. 
Just a few cards already on the infield, so the caution is out. There's the offending wheel. The marshals will remove that and return it to its owner. We get ready for the restart. There is the race leader, 37 Sam Jacklin. James Morris behind him in 463 is a lap down. He had a spin early on. There's Mr. Bellevue, as we've called him this year, number 94, John Dowson Jr. Just ahead of a couple of fellow blue graders. Stephen Smith already at the front of the shootout superstars fighting for the Mitex National Points Championship. Here we go, ready for the restart then. Stephen Smith under fire from Junior Waitman. He knows he's only got to get a couple of decent results today in his heats and he will be national points champion. Nigel Green has got to basically score a maximum in this double points final round to overhaul Stewart at the top of the charts. He came into this meeting with a lead of over 100 points. Away goes Sam Jacklin in the lead. He's got James Morris behind him. Keep wide there, Jack France could lose a place there to Matt Newson in number 16. Will Yarrow has done the fastest lap of the race in 22 with Jacklin fighting it out with James Morris there, I'm not sure why, because Morris is a lap down. Joff Gibson in 249 has had a spin there, and he gets collected by Martin Spires in 451. Here come the leaders in 2 2 on a big push coming in from the Blue Graders, and wallop straight in goes Will Yarrow, that's also played Joe Booth and a couple of others, and again Stuart Smith gets through. He always seems to be able to avoid pile ups, he's got this knack of finding the gaps. Stuart Smith, if he doesn't find a gap, well, he creates his own. That's how stock car racing works. He gets past, gets past Junior Waitman now in 5-1-5. Fights back in with the bumper there. The British champion with the black and white chequered roof. But Stuart Smith stays ahead. A few lead changes up front. Pick up the leaders in uh, just a moment. 37 Sam Jacklin is there. It uh, may well be him still leading, but maybe not for much longer. Jack France under fire there in 2 one 6 3 wide with Mark Sargent, who goes through the tunnels on the inside there. John Dowson, Junior in number 94 and I think Smith is about to go to the front is Jack France who's gone through into the lead in fact in 216 there is the white grader he's picking up the race leader there Jack France in 216 but Smith is on his tail now he's come through the pack so quickly we're only just over half distance and he goes through into the lead coming out of turn two there you can see his progress up the field making up more than 10 places in the first nine laps to take the lead there is no stopping Stuart Smith this year if he wins this, he only needs to pick up a few more points in Heat 3 with the two-thirds format being used today, and he will be national points champion. Nigel Green really has to win this race. We've not seen much of Nigel in this one as Jack France goes, nearly takes Junior Waitman with him there. Bube Ayakidinga stranded the wrong way at the end of the home straight. Three I know Stuart Smith, a masterclass out in front. Junior Wayman, he's up to second now ahead of Sam Jacklin as Lee Fairhurst gets stuffed by Mark Gilbank in number 21. It's a car park on turn four caused by the spun Sam Jacklin. That's taken out a couple of white graders. Martin Spires is one of them. Junior Wayman attacks James Morris. He's been hit from every side in this one. Another chaotic race here at Bellevue as we've seen so often before. Carl Roberts is the other car stuck there at turn four. I don't think Waitman's going to catch Stuart Smith as he avoids the back markers, something he is very, very adept at doing. There's Nigel Green, further down the uh, top ten. Let's see where he comes through to finish. I think he's into the top five now. There's Waitman going through in second. In fact, Green is up to third. He's just got past number 94 there of John Dowson Jr. And John is actually a lap down. A rare sight at Bellevue. He's normally a winner here. The Blue Raider. A couple of laps to go this time then for Stuart Smith in 3.90. He's got the recovering Will Yarrow ahead of him and Junior Waitman getting caught up there with a couple of back markers. That could lose him second place. There's Nigel Green in 4.45 up to third, the world and European champion. 11 final wins on tarmac this year, a few on shale as well. Stuart Smith on being held up there by Will Yarrow, his car's got some damage. You can see the rear wheel wobbling there. He hit the uh, fence on turn one earlier on. He's corkscrewing around trying to get a finish. Now can Junior Wayman catch the 390 here? Moving down towards the final turn. I don't think Junior Wayman's going to do it. Stuart Smith just playing it safe there. He doesn't want to risk tangling up with the 22 of Yarrow and he's coming in to take the win. 390 Stuart Smith takes it and puts himself more than ever in pole position for the National Points Championship, sponsored by Mintex Braking Systems. The tangle there on the final turn. Mark Sargent and Mark Gilbank involved. 
Well, Stuart Smith only needs a few more points in Heat 3 now, and he has done it. And will take the uh, National Points Championship. Wait to see if he does confirm that in Heat 3. Stuart Smith taking the win in Heat number 2. Junior Wayneman behind him by six tenths of a second. Nigel Green third. Early leader Sam Jacklin, a fine fourth place with Lee Fairhurst rounding out the top five. 15 cars went the distance out of the 29 who started that one, and Stuart Smith, not surprisingly, got the fastest lap. 390, Stuart Smith. They say it's not over till the fat lady sings. She's warming up. <laughs> yeah, it's not done yet. I'm not saying anything yet, but um, yeah, I've done my best. That's all I can do, just doing my job the best I can. And um, next heat, go and try and win that as well. And I think that will mean if I beat Nigel and Frankie and Lee, then that, that'll be it, I think. I'll have to get my mathematician on the job. Yeah, I've just been talking to him. He says you can't afford to drop more than nine points. Does that make you change your tactics and think, well, if I get rid of Nigel, I've definitely done it? No, no, not really. I went into the, the first heat to win it, and I'm going to do the same in this one. That's all you can do, just do your job. And then once, once the job's done, then I can move on to the next job then. Yeah, and uh, track, how have you found the track tonight? Um, gotta be honest, no, it's not very good. Uh, it's a bit bumpy, <laughs> to say the least. But you know, we're all in the same boat. We've all got to put up with it, and just just hope it doesn't damage too many cars, because that's what will you know make people off. But we're all out there, we're all bouncing around and having fun. Sporting some rather nice headwear as well. Buckle yourself up tight and go out in the next one. Yeah, that's it. Good luck. Thank you. Mentioning headwear there during that interview, you may have spotted Stuart Smith sporting a green sport hat. Nigel Green, Stuart Smith, great friends off the track, great rivals on it, so heat number three out on track then. This could be the race where Stuart Smith secures the Mintex National Points Championship for 2017. There are 20 cars out there, a slightly smaller field than we saw earlier on. The shootout to superstars at the back, headed by Paul Hines in 259, alongside him 422 of Ben Riley. The track getting pretty rough out there, but the drivers will take the rough with the smooth, as they say. There is Junior Wayman, there is Nigel Green. Can he stop Stuart Smith in this heat at number three? It's all on this race, 16 laps. Here we go with heat number three under the Bellevue floodlights. Really a bit of push and shove in among the shootout superstars fighting for that Mintex National Points Championship. Green ahead of Smith as they take the green flag over the bumps at turn one. He's already spun out there. Sam Bacon in number 93 has gone the uh, early leaders, it's 424 of Mike Haywood ahead of 76 of Aaron Cousins, a big bump developed there in the middle of turn one, they bounce over it, Cousins up the inside and he takes the lead, he's had a couple of wins on the shale this season, a big push there and wallop straight in goes Paul Hines in 259, had a big pile up at the back there and is that Green out, Green slowed up, Nigel Green's out of the race, that could decide it, that could be the moment that decides this year's National Points Championship as Lee Fairhurst gets put in at the other end of the raceway, but the significant incident there on turns one and two, it looks as though Nigel Green is out of the race. Stuart Smith's got away with it. He got through on the inside as everybody else went into the fence. Well, that could decide it if Smith keeps going and finishes in the points here. With Nigel Green out of the race, Stuart Smith will become National Points Champion. Aaron Cousins leads the race. Smith's already on the back of the yellow tops. It's Aaron Cousins who leads ahead of Haywood, James Morris, Geoff Gibson, Ben Riley. Smith is up into eighth place already. We're only on lap number four. Lumpers going in there at uh, turns uh, three and four. Four two two. Ben Riley under fire. There is Cousins in 76 leading the race, and I think he's going off. Yes, slides out on the back straight. So Mike Haywood takes the lead back again in four two four. The local man, only two wins since 1993 for Mr. Bellevue. The other Mr. Bellevue, of course, that's the moniker given to John Dowson Jr. Stuart Smith knows he's only got to keep going and finish in the uh, points places now to confirm himself as Mintex National Points Champion. He won't hold back, though. He's an entertainer, Stuart Smith. And he will do his best to fight his way to the front of the field. 424, Mike Haywood has got the lead as we come up towards half distance. It's James Morris in second, Ben Riley is third. Then we've got Stuart Smith now up into fourth place. Geoff Gibson in fifth position. Junior Wayman behind him. Mike Haywood sliding out wide at turns three and four. Nearly clips the parked car of uh, Ricky Wilson, number 502. Junior Wayman getting to grips with uh, Geoff 
Gibson and Wilson's been collected there by Joe Booth in 4.46, the blue grader. And Ricky Wilson in 5.02, a second place earlier on as Waitman again attacks Gibson coming out of turn two. Still uh, leading the way, it is uh, Mike Haywood in 4.24, I think. But the caution flags are out. The caution is out, I think, for Ricky Wilson in 5.02. The race being brought under the yellow flags, they'll have to line up single file amazingly after that impact of the fence earlier on Paul Hines is still going I just caught a glimpse of him there well we'll see what happened in that incident there was a big push mainly from Junior Wayman that put about four or five cars away there Smith as he always seems to do nipped through on the inside of everybody we'll see him going into turn one here and that was quite an impact for Paul Hines he had about four cars on the back of him but more significantly Nigel Green was caught in there damaged the front of his car Green out of the race there you can see the impact that Paul Hines took into a fence post and then a little further round 502 Ricky Wilson I think he blew his engine there great cloud of smoke and while he was uh, stationary on the outside he got collected by a couple of other cars there is Nigel Green in 445 his race is over and surely his national points championship is over as well now climbs over the fence into the pits and well this is Stuart Smith's points championship for the taking now we have lost uh, Mike Haywood, unfortunately, so it's 4 6 3 of um, James Morris that has now got the lead. There is Smith in third behind Ben Riley in 4 2 2. Mike Haywood, ah, in fact, he is still there in fourth place. He dropped back there just before the yellows came out. Apologies, there is still in the race ahead of Junior Waitman in 5 1 5. But back underway then, the green goes down. 4 2 2, Ben Riley under fire from Smith for second place. He could hold back and just make sure he finishes in the top ten, but that is not Stuart Smith's style at all, as Mike Hayward gets dumped wide there by Junior Waitman for fourth place. 4-6-3, James Morris with the lead, the Blue Raider. 390 of Stuart Smith in second, a tangle there. That is Frankie JJ in treble five, and 249 Joff Gibson. He's been battling the Waitmans all the way through this race. He settles down again then with James Morris up front, but under threat now from Stuart Smith in 390. Son of the greatest stock car driver of them all, Stuart Smith Sr. 500 finals he won in his career and well over a thousand races. Maybe Stuart, and Stuart Jr. will match his great father's achievements someday. There's a battle between Matt Newson and Danny Wayman in 2-1-2. It's been a quiet season for Danny, but it normally goes well here at Bellevue. We've lost Frankie JJ in treble five and third three. Stuart Smith still chasing 463 of James Morris. They're lapping Paul Hines. I don't know how Paul, Paul's car is still going after the impact that took earlier on. He got well and truly walloped straight in down on the first turn into a fence post. Lap boards are out now. Five to go for 463 on James Morris. He's got Smith on his tail. There's Hines. He's got a punctured tyre, but he's still going. Junior Wayman under fire from John Dowson Jr. Mr. Bellevue over the last few years. Making his fair share of final wins here. Still leading the way, it is Morris with Smith on his tail. Morris with the fastest lap of the race that time through. These two are pulled clear of the rest of the pack. Junior Wayman and John Dowson Jr. battling for the minor placings. We saw them have some great fights here at Bellevue last year. Ben Riley still in third. Wayman and Dowson battle, I think, is for fourth place. This is for the lead between James Morris and Stuart Smith, who is now just two laps away from becoming the 2017 Mintex National Points Champion. Nelson and Waitman continue to fight further back, with Matt Newson in there as well. It's all about the two leaders at the moment. Ben Riley's safe in third place. This group are not going to catch him. Into the last lap we go then. James Morris attacking the back markers. He gets rid of Mark Poole in 276 in no uncertain terms. Smith will surely go for a last bend attack here. He's quite a way back, but he'll go for it up the inside. Here we go into the final turn. There goes the attack in. In goes Morris. Smith up the inside. He's going to take the win. And the National Points Championship. Stuart Smith is Mintex National Points Champion for 2017. And he does it in style with a last bend lunge to take the race win. His second race win of the meeting. Smith has done it. The silver roof is going to Rochdale for 2017-18. Stuart Smith celebrates with a donut. Congratulations, 390 Stuart Smith, your 2017 Mintex Risker Formula One stock car national points champion. Celebrates with donuts as the red flags come out. He 
dominated the shootout stage of the National Points Championship right from the off. And he takes the win and the silver roof in heat number three. Stuart Smith, the winner, ahead of James Morris with Ben Riley third. Dowson leading home Newson and Junior Wayman to complete the top six. James Morris, meanwhile, got the fastest lap of the race. Let's go and hear from our new National Points Champion. 390, Stuart Smith. Now we can say it, 2017 National Points Champion. Yeah, bloody brilliant. Really good feeling. Um, mainly to do it for not just myself, but most of all my wife and my kids because they, they put up with not seeing me all week. You know, I'm working on the cars with the lads and secondly, I'd like to thank the lads. They all come down voluntary uh, every night when we're down. You know, this week we've been terribly busy. Um, and lastly, my sponsors and my fans. Um, sponsors keep us going and the fans keep us enthused to go keep going and winning championships. And uh, as you can see, they're the best fans in the world. And uh, they know I like pie, so they've got us loads of pies here. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, you have got good fans here, not just tonight, but all through the season. And you were the first ever National Points champion in the new shootout format. Now you've done it again keeping the Smith name at the top of the sport. Yeah, it's great. You know, I've, I started racing wanting to win championships and, and um, won the World Championship first in 2007. And since then, won a couple of major championships, the British and the National Points. And um, since then, it's been a bit of a drought, you know. Um, your life has to fit in with stock cars and my life took a, a, a different direction. And now I can con concentrate on stock cars and I'm lucky enough to do that with a good team and a good family and sponsors behind me. Now you did tell us at the opening bell view of the season when we were here, you wanted this, you really did want it. Easy's not the right word, but did you expect it to go so smooth? I should answer it a bit more confident than I would, so I am going to do I don't normally blow my own trumpet, but I believe I'm the best out there and I believe that the team is the best and the cars are the best. So if you didn't believe that, there's no point in coming. And I firmly believed it, I was going to win something this year, if not everything. And I, I know it sounds big headed, but you have to have that mentality. And I certainly had it this year. And, and I think we've shown sh during the shootout that I can, nobody can live with me if we're, if we're on song. So fingers crossed we can keep it going for a few years. Well, now's the time to go and get a pie, celebrate. <laughs> I believe there's a little surprise in the back of the bus. Go and enjoy the rest of the evening. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're manufacturers of race wings, so to come here without a silver one would have been daft. Well, congratulations again. Thank you, thank you very much. Congratulations then to Stuart Smith, 390, National Points Champion for 2017, but that's not the end of the action. The meeting final and Grand National, plus highlights from the Formula 2 is still to come after a short break in this program so maybe go and uh, grab yourself a pie and there'll be more stock car action coming up after the break cars on track then for the second heat 18 cars out there for this one drivers to look out for include uh, former world champion tom harris in car 84 number four of dan johnson 16 of Matt Newson, also Mr. Bellevue as we call him, John Dowson Jr. There he is in the number 94 car, already attacking 259 of Paul Hines as the race gets underway. Danny Wayman, the fourth member of the Wayman family, 212 is out there as well. As the pack surges down into turn one, the early leader is number 280 of Colin Nairn, the man from Leicester. And sight they make as they charge into the back straight on board with Joe Booth in car 446 under fire from uh, Danny Wayman and a couple of others. Wayman's going to be spun aside there. Oh, he's tangled with Dan Johnson, so two big names in trouble already. John Dowson crashes into a marker tyre, and we have a change of the lead. Rob Plant in 364 has uh, taken the lead down the back straight ahead of Colin Nairn in 280. Third is 495, that is Richard Howarth. 338, Chris Broxop there has lost a tyre going round at turns three and four. There's the 84 of Tom Harris towards the back. He's Plant two leads ahead of Nairn, Howarth and Mal Brown in uh, number 34. There's number 16 of Matt Newson racing Mark Sargent's car today. You can see Mark's number 326 on the side of the cab. Matt's elected to race that car today. Chased by 259 there at Paul Hines. And on the Blue Raiders, 463, James Morris, recent final winner at Northampton. The first uh, meeting on shale at Northampton for the Brisker Formula 1 to the track changing surface for this year. On board with 84 of Tom Harris, the former world champion. 
racing sprint cars in America this year, as well as his brisk red one. Jack France gets walloped there in 216 by the 244 of Mick Rogers. Matt Newson moving up the places in car number 16 behind the Brisker F1 hire cars that we see out at uh, so many meetings, but he's in a borrowed car himself today, the Mark Sargent car. 259 Paul Hines under fire from 84 of Tom, the hitman Harris, as they come round turns one and two. 280 Colin Nairn has been uh, under attack for second place there, three wide off turn four. Here comes Mal Brown in the 34 car, gets the bumper in on Nairn. 495, the ex-Rebels racer Richard Howarth is uh, up behind them going on here for second place, it's Rob Plant out in front though. Mark Woodhull next in 3-3-5, then it's Newson coming through well from the back. Harris making up the places too down the home straight, still Plant from there, then Brown, Howarth, Woodhull, Newson sixth, James Morris seventh, and we've got Tom Harris behind him in the 84 as we reach half distance in this 16 lap, heat number two, trying to qualify for places on that British Championship grid later on. Plant leads the way as Colin there loses it there. Mal Brown no, spins out and wallop it goes 2-8-0 of uh, Colin now. I think he was trying to go into the pits without opening the gate there. That's ruined his race. 16, Matt Newson gets past Mark Woodhull in 3-3-5. They've got ahead of Richard Howarth in 4-95. There's Harris in 84. Taking his time to move up the field here. He's trying to move past Richard Howarth. As off goes Mal Brown onto the centre. He's out of the race. That's a shame. He was going well in the 34 car. Harris. Looks like some damage there. Yeah, the front suspension is broken on the 94 car of John Dowson Jr., Mr. Bellevue. So he's struggling on. He'll uh, want a race finish all the same. See the front of the car has collapsed, dragging along the ground as uh, Tom Harris gets ahead of him there. Very similar looking cars, those two. 259 Paul Hines under fire from James Morris. You know his shale form. Matt Newson is now up in the second place with the demise of Mal Brown and Colin Nair. I think Colin Nairn's got going again after uh, that wallop straight in on turn two. Yes, there he goes, almost a lap behind uh, our leader, Rob Plant. Are we going to have a white grade winner or is Matt Newson going to catch it? 84, Tom Harris busy attacking Mark Woodhull in 3-3-5, another shale specialist. Jake Morris passes Paul Hines. 2-5-9, the Progress Windows car. Before Dan Johnson's got going again, he had his race ruined by an early tangle with Danny Wayman. Wayman's a bit further back uh, down the order, I think. Matt Newson attacks for the lead as they go into turn three. He gets the bumper in on the 364 of Rob Plant. He goes through into the lead at turns three and four with a couple of laps to run. Lapping Colin Nairn as well, and Plant's fighting back. A tenacious drive by the white grader here. We look back from the slowing uh, car of John Dowson Jr. We saw his damage earlier on. Now, can uh, the 364 of Rob Plant fight back here and try to uh, retake the lead? Tom Harris is closing in as well. Getting a little dusty in the uh, closing stage of this one. Matt Newson is on his final lap now. Well, a change of car has certainly worked for Matt Newson. Racing the Mark Sargent car. He's heading home to win. Heat number two in car number 16. Round the final turn. Tom Harris has got through for second. But it's a win for Matt Newson in car 16. Harris comes over in second. Great run by Robert Plant taking third place. It looks like Mark Woodhull and Dan Johnson quite possibly next home. Good recovery by Dan after that early tangle. Bad luck to John Dowson Jr after that uh, suspension failure, he does manage to drag the car home for a race finish. It's a win for Matt Newsom by uh, 2.3 seconds ahead of Tom Harris, who got past Rob Plant on the last bend. Woodhull fourth ahead of Johnson and Hines, then Joe Booth seventh ahead of 175 of Carl Hawkins, Mick Rogers and the 276 of Mark Poole rounding out the top ten. 14 cars went the distance in that one, and it was Dan Johnson in fifth who got the fastest lap. Number 16, Matt Newsom, heat two winner. Think back 12 months, Sheffield, you nearly won the British in a Mark Sargent car. You've just won heat one in a Mark Sargent car. Yeah, but I don't want to look back too close because this is exactly what happened last year, but I didn't win. So, yeah, no, um, to be fair, last year I thought I'd done everything right, but the track got really bad in the final. I was on the outside. It was nowhere to go. So I hope today I get an inside row and not an outside. So, no, it was good. I mean, thanks to Mark for letting me use it like he always does, and the car's great. It's nice to get some points on the board early on in this. It's not all about winning heats, it's, it's just getting them points to get you at the front. Yeah, considering we haven't got many cars here, the most important thing is three positions, because that will always get you near the front. Whether it's first, third, fourth, it doesn't matter. Three positions, and that's really what I set out to do, but it, it just fell into place nicely for me, so I took it. And hopefully you'll be on the top step this time. Yeah, you know, the last three years I've been second and third twice. It, it really is time I was at the top, but there's so many people out there that also want to be at the top that, you know, it's a tough game.
Yeah, there's no easy races today. No, no, no doubt about it. Anyone that says you've got a lucky win's wrong. It, it's hard out there and everyone's gunning for it. Nobody wants to be second and just the best man's got to come out on top. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. A slightly smaller field on track then for heats at number three. Stuart Smith is out in this one, as is Frankie JJ. Phoebe Wainman's out there as well. They'll be among the names to watch. A whole gaggle of red graders there towards the back. And a couple of spinners already. John Dowson Jr. and Bradley Harrison, number 25, involved there. Stuart Smith gets around the outside. Race starts to settle in from the off. Number 104, Paul Spooner. He's a early leader in this one, ahead of Ricky Wilson. We saw him out earlier on. Tim Warwick as well. 238, Richard Bryan is in there in the battle for the lead early on. Dowson Jr. has done well to repair his car for this uh, his second heat of the day. A tangle there. Oh, Richard Bryan's gone again. We saw him crash out of heat one as well. That's handed Paul Spooner a clear lead in uh, 104, the car with the smaller wing design. Race starts to uh, settle in, they start to sort themselves out. 216 Jack France is up to second, and it's Big Rogers in the 244 car. Stuart Smith will be the favourite for this one, attacking Frankie JJ there in treble five. Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. gets through on the inside. Will Hunter in there as well could be one to watch in the 220 car as Smith bounces off Tim Warwick coming out of turn two. Stuart Smith in 390 with the silver roof. Is it going to be black, white, and silver at the end of today? Should shove there into turn one, almost three wide. Hunter, Hines and Mark Gilbank, Billy Johnson in 169 in there as well. Jack France gets the bumper in on Ricky Wilson, trying to take second place away in number 216. Looks like he's got second behind Paul Spooner, who's running well up front, the ex-Formula 2 man in 104. Smith now gets past Phoebe Wayman. These two backing it out, Paul Hines and Mark Gilbank in the 21, who had a win recently at Northampton on the Shale Way there as well. Race now settled in, Stuart Smith on the attack from the back, here comes Jack France, good hit, hit there on Paul Spooner, fires him wide to the fence and takes the lead away. It's Jack France in 216, whose dad Graham used to race under the same number. Leads ahead of 502, Ricky Wilson, here comes a big hit in from Mick Rogers in 244, the XV8 Hotstocks at Gold Top in fourth place, the man from Worcestershire attacking Paul Spooner now for third place. Wilson in second, he's been taken wide as a result of that, and Rogers caught up with Spooner, they're going to crash out onto the infield. That's a great shame, because Rogers is looking quick there. Stuart Smith got round the outside in three, and I know I think he's up to uh, fourth place now. It's France who leads, Will Hunter second, Wilson third, then Smith. Rogers still stuck there on the inside, along with Paul Spooner, he was running well up at the front, but he's now facing the wrong way. Smith passes Wilson up into third position. Now attacking Will Hunter in the 220, the Hunter Pack car. Next in the order is Mark Gilbank in 21. Start Marshall signals them through. Behind Gilbank it is the 259 of Paul Hyde. Just past half distance in this uh, heat number three. Qualifying places on that British Championship grid for later on. Every driver, don't forget, races in three out of the six heats to qualify. Richard Bryan has come to a halt there again on turn two, but it's still 216, Jack France who has the lead, round turns three and four. Will Hunter, a few car links back in second. And it's Stuart Smith. Surely Smith will be the favourite now, still a few laps to go to catch these two ahead of him. Gilbank is fourth, Hines fifth. John Dowson in sixth in 94 in his repaired car after that suspension failure in his first race. Will Hunter has got Sir Jack France in his sights now. Stuart Smith, is he going to hang back and just wait and see what the two ahead of him do? No, of course he's not, Stuart Smith never hangs back. As 2.20, Will Hunter goes for the inside at turn three, he goes through into the lead, Smith will follow him. France goes down to third place. Four laps to go now, Will Hunter in 2.20. Brother Henry used to race alongside him. Here comes the 3.90 up the inside, Smith takes the lead. That didn't take him long to catch Will Hunter, Jack France trying to fight back in 2.16. And uh, France takes a hit there from Mark Gilbank. That's broken a uh, front wheel off the 216 car. After a strong run early on, Jack France is out of the race. Well, Stuart Smith then, beaten in that uh, frantic fight in heat one with the reigning champion, Junior Wayman. He's surely heading for victory in this one. It's well clear of Will Hunter. I think it's Gilbank now up in the third place with the demise of the 216 of Jack France. Paul Hines up there in fourth. He's won the British and the European in the past. Of John Dowson, and they're well clear of the rest. Into the last lap goes Stuart Smith in 390. Joined Junior Wayman and Matt Newson as a winner today. No 
those three the really big favourites this British title, I would say, coming into the meeting today. And Stuart Smith, the national points champion, comes home to win heat number three here at Bellevue. Second place will go to 220 of Will Hunter and Mark Gilbank in third, then Paul Hines, and then John Dowson. The rest of the pack come home. We'll confirm the finishing order in a few moments' time. Stuart Smith, the winner then, by just under two seconds ahead of Will Hunter. Mark Gilbank third, ahead of Paul Hines. It was Frankie JJ who uh, took fifth place ahead of Bradley Harrison. Then Phoebe Wayman, Billy Johnson, Richard Wilson and uh, Mick Rogers, the only ten classified finishers in that one. And it was Stuart Smith who also got the fastest lap. 390, Stuart Smith, winner of Heat 3 here. Another good race. Yeah, it was all right. Uh, just tried to pick off Will Hunter as, as fast as I can, but I was quite happy at one point to just sit behind him and because uh, I knew we were both pretty quick. We were putting some good laps in. Um, and it's all about just can keep me The final chance for drivers to qualify then. This is Heat number 6, another 18 cars out there on track. Frankie Wayman Jr. and Stuart Smith, the main two to watch from the back as they continue their rivalry. Danny Wayman needs a good result here as well in 2-1-2. We are underway, looking back at the 37 of Chris Cowley. Nigel Harry slides out towards the fence there, down the home straight. Tom Harris in there as well in 84. He's had a tough day so far, attacking Stuart Smith. We look back from the National Points Champions car, the freshly watered track, as you can see. But this one, a spinner there, and uh, Tom Harris just about dodged through on the inside. Here's the battle for the lead with uh, Colin Nairn, I think, trying to climb over Tim Warwick, and he goes into the fence there, Colin Nairn, at the end of the home straight. So Warwick will have the early lead. No, he won't, because he's spun. Mike Haywood's going to be spun out as well. There's nobody want to lead this race. 37, Chris Cowley, maybe he does. Under fire there from 220 of Will Hunter. Bobby Griffin in trouble as well in 166. And through it all, as always, comes Stuart Smith in 390. Cars piling in on turns three and four. Mark Gilbank, Luke Dennis, Will Hunter in there as well. Tom Harris on the inside. Dennis gets squeezed out. Oh, and he's going to roll it. No, not quite. Big incident there on the home straight for Luke Dennis in 192. Very nearly went over down the home straight. Car in the fence on turn three. That's Mark Poole. The yellow flags are coming out. And the caution flag is out. Try and pick up the race leader for the restart. I think it's Richard Howarth in 495. So down the home straight there, how did Luke Dennis not roll over? That was a big incident there. He'll be a bit shaken up after that one. We see from Tom Harris's point of view, up the fence he climbed and then got smashed round and round. Luckily Luke Dennis is OK and the race will resume with Richard Howarth in 4.95 in the lead ahead of James Morris and Mike Hayward. So this won't take long to dry out in these hot conditions. It is absolutely boiling today here at Bellevue. Chris Cowley were on board with, ropes wide on the restart, Smith and Harris will go through. Chris Cowley, a bit of a tough day so far today, the son of the legendary Rob Cowley. It's Mike Haywood in trouble there at Turn 3, Stuart Smith backs off rather than going to the side of him. Richard Howarth with the early lead ahead of uh, James Morris. Morris spins it, so does Howarth, uh, Haywood rather, and uh, Tom Harris has gone in there as well. Oh dear. So who's that uh, handed the leading positions to? I think Richard Howarth is still there in front. I think Stuart Smith might be up to second place already. Yes, he is. And Junior Wayman is third because everybody else has gone off in front of them. Well, the, uh, all the lower graders, except for Richard Howarth, have pretty much self-destructed in this one. Now, Howarth's been held up by a back marker and Stuart Smith goes through into the lead. So all that mayhem in the early stages have pretty much handed Stuart Smith the lead of this one. And uh, you wouldn't get against him from here. From the back of the grid, he's in the lead by lap five. Junior Wayman is up into second place, I think. There's Tim Warwick in 307. He gets that's exactly the same fence post he hit in his first hit. I must think there's a magnet in that post. Well, it's Smith versus Wayman again. There's Richard Howarth in 495. Led the early laps of this one. Mark Gilbank going through as well. Howarth, I think, is slowing down. Nigel Harry coming through as well. He's going well. Everybody else is pretty much self destructive. Richard Howarth now parks up on turn one in the back of a stranded car many finishers to this one if they keep going like this. Well, Stuart Smith is uh, away and gone in front. He's leading by a country mile. 515 Junior Wayman, I think, has come through now in the second place. It's Will Hunter who's got the fastest lap. Smith is now taking on back markers. 280 Colin Nairn. We've already seen him hit the fence once in this race. But he tried to climb over Tim Warwick at the start of the race. There's the lead gap. There's Wayman in second place. Is the British Championship going to be just between these two? I think Matt Newsom might have something to say about this as uh, Colin Nairn does a mid-race donut on turn four. Wayman just misses him. 
Mark Gilbank in third in the number 21. A destructive heat number six. Stuart Smith has now got the fastest lap, 16.51 seconds. There's no answer to his pace here, even uh, Junior Wayman. I think he's going to have to settle the second in this one. Somebody's lost an aerofoil there at uh, turn four, I noticed. Who does that belong to? Certainly not Stuart Smith, the silver still glinting away there. He powers on in this heat number six. He's way ahead of everybody else. Looks like the Red Sea is parting ahead of him there in the first few laps. Everybody else just went off around him. Mike Haywood uh, was one of the first into the fence on turn one. Tom Harris joined him in the pile up along with a couple of others. Junior Wayman still second, then it's Gilbank in the 21. Further back in the order there's Chris Cowley, James Morris, Bobby Griffin still going, Will Hunter. There's Mike Haywood in 424, has rejoined after that pile up earlier on. The leader coming up to lap Bobby Griffin, I think that is now. Just a couple of laps to go this time around. There is Junior Wayne, but he's not going to catch Stuart Smith here. Mark Gilbank is chasing him down as well. Gilbank wants a good qualifying position here. Two laps to go for Stewart in the 3-9-0. He's become the fourth race winner of the day in these qualifying heats. See how the grid works out. The uh, calculators will be at the ready in uh, race control to work out the grid for the British Championship based on the results of all the heats combined. Junior Waitman is under fire here from Mark Gilbank. Gilbank, I think, is going through down into the back straight. He's having a look on the inside. Smith's going to take the win. Here he comes up to the chequered flag, but who is going to be second? Smith wins it. Who's going to come home in second place? It's Gilbank who gets there, I think. They're going to come into view their way back, and it is Gilbank in second place ahead of Junior Waynman. We'll confirm the rest of the results in just a moment. Total dominance there from Stuart Smith, taking the win by nearly seven seconds. That's half a lap ahead of Mark Gilbank. Junior Wayman third, Nigel Harry a good fourth ahead of Chris Cowley, then James Morris, Will Hunter, Bobby Griffin, then Billy Johnson and the recovered Mike Haywood in tenth place. Carl Hawkins and Danny Wayman, a disastrous day for him, were the other finishers in that one, and Stuart Smith, not surprisingly, got the fastest lap. 390, Stuart Smith, winner of Heat 6. That's job done so far. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not job done. It's not even half done, or even quarter yet. It's a, a long goal race to win and um, everybody's going to want to win it they know I'm fastest I'm sure they'll be trying to take their opportunity which stock car racing I suppose but yeah I'm just going to go as fast as I can and hopefully win it and how will you approach this race I would imagine the track's going to be heavily watered at the start and then very dry at the end yeah it will be I'm sure um, just have to it's the same for everybody some cars are better in the wet than me but I don't know I'll try and drive better than them and try and pull away no. <laughs> yeah, and you've had two firsts and a second, but it's the next first that really counts. Yeah, that's right. I'm confident. I think the car's good. I'm driving well. Yeah, I just need to do my job, really. That's it. Got to help anybody that overtakes you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, start The most famous words in motorsport herald the engines into life for the main event, the 2018 Brisker Formula One Stock Cars British Championship Final. 29 cars on the grid, 20 laps the distance. Stuart Smith in pole position, Matt Newson alongside him. Stuart Smith just needing a push start there by the look of things. His arch rival, Junior Wayman, the reigning champion, is right behind him. Cam Johnson on the second row of the grid. So well up there is Paul Hines, Ricky Wilson's qualified well, Mark Gilbank, Joe Booth, Will Hunter, the rest of them. Rob Plant is well up there in 364, the white grader, he's had a cracking day. 29 cars out there then, who will be taking the black and white checkers? Will it be Junior Wayman for the third year in a row? Will it finally be Matt Newson to take a major title? Stuart Smith is hanging back by the look of things here, Newson's moved ahead of him. Will we get a green flag? This time by, it looks like we are going to. Here we go. Let's get ready to rumble with the British Championship 2018. On a freshly watered track, it's Newson who leads them off ahead of Stuart Smith in second place, Junior Wayman in third. We look back from Joe Booth in 446. Dan Johnson's already been taken wide here in the number four. We've got a tangle on the outside. Paul Hines and Chris Cowley. Bradley Harrison's in there. Nigel Harry's gone in as well. Uh, there's more cars piling in. Rob Plants, uh, Mick Rogers. Turn two is almost completely blocked there. Is this going to be a yellow flag? 
Newson is going to try and thread his way through on the inside. Carl Roberts in there, and Junior Wayman's been taken out in 5-1-5, the reigning champion. He's been hit. He's been hit by uh, Lee Fairhurst. I think his front suspension's broken. Junior Wayman is in trouble here. He's in the pile-up. Turn two is almost fully blocked. This race is surely going to have to be stopped. They're trying to find a way through there. There's the leader, Matt Newson. He has got through as the blockage starts to clear on uh, turn two. Matt Newson somehow gets through it all. I can see from Days of Thunder there as he uh, fights his way through the traffic on the back straight. Now Mark Poole gets spun aside and uh, another car goes into the fence on uh, turns three and four. Oh, goodness me, Matt Newson leads it there. And now the yellow flags come out when turn two is almost clear. Well, there's the pile-up, at least uh, six or seven cars involved. Danny Wayman's in there, why wouldn't he be? He's had that sort of day up on top of Mick Rogers there. Carl Roberts is in there, Billy Johnson, Rob Plant in 364. That's a great shame. But the most significant moment is right there. Lee Fairhurst hits the front wheel of Junior Wayman, and broken his suspension, and the reigning champion is out. There will be a new name wearing the black and white checkers at the end of this one. Here we go then, Matt Newson leads them off in car number 16 on the restart. 390 Stuart Smith are on board with him in second. A third place car sliding out there, so the first two will go clear. Joe Booth has spun in 446. He gets clobbered by uh, John Dowson in 94. Mr Bellevue, we've lost Nigel Harry on turn four in the 45. There's the battle for third place. It looks like Frankie JJ up there. He must have got through the pile-ups very well indeed. Fighting with Mark Gilbank the third. We've lost Phoebe Wayman and uh, the 93 of Sam Makin down there, but already Newson and Smith pulling away at the front. 313 Carl Roberts under fire from uh, Gilbank in the 21. The order off the grid has been thrown completely out of whack by those uh, pile-ups in the uh, first couple of laps. Matt Newson continues to lead, a couple of spun cars there on turns one and two, it's Gilbank up into third in the 21, ahead of Frankie JJ in treble five, he was the big winner in that mayhem at the start. Started well back, but he's up to four. Newson gets rid of a back marker out wide, Sam Makin gets shouldered aside there, he knows he's got to put distance between himself and Stuart Smith. Down the back straight goes Lee Fairhurst. Bradley Harrison in 25, they're a little further back, it's been a very quiet day for Lee Fairhurst, in fact for both of these drivers so far, they're in 5th uh, and 6th at the moment I think though, it's hard to tell who's on what lap after all that chaos early on, Matt Newson confronted with back mark as he fires Ricky Wilson into the side of Nigel Harry and uh, Wilson nearly rolls it over the front of the uh, 45 car there. Well, Matt Newson starting to uh, go clear now at the front of the field. The start of the race a bit cagey, but uh, was it his own fault? Was the inside line hanging back a bit? It was a confusing start that let Matt Newson get away. We did then, of course, have uh, the stoppage for that pile-up on turn two. There's Fairhurst in 2 one He's got Carl Roberts in 3-1-3 attacking him. Not sure whether Roberts is a lap down or not. Fairhurst flicks him to the inside. Danny Wayman, meanwhile has done the fastest lap of the race as Roberts is now taken out in turn one. We've lost uh, Carl Hawkins there, uh, Sam Makin in 93 as well in this 2018 British Championship for Briscoe Formula One, about to reach half distance. Matt Newson continues to lead in car number 16. Is it finally going to happen for him? Is he finally going to win a major title? We're up to halfway. He's up to lap Mark Woodhull in 3-3-5. He knows he's got to put distance between himself and Stuart Smith. Smith trying to close in. Sam Bacon was not going again in 93. Newson passes him, no problem. Which is Phoebe Wayman aside in 2 1 1. Newson continues to lead. There's Smith, a couple of back markers further back. Sunset here in Manchester. Round turns 1 and 2. Come the leaders. It's still Newson from Smith. And I think I see a yellow flag waving. Yes, the caution's out, and uh, that'll be the last thing Matt Newson wants to see. Because the caution's out, and for the restart, Smith's going to be on his bumper. Well, the uh, reason for the caution, there's uh, a tangle there, a couple of cars off on turn three. It's possibly the reason for the yellow flag. We're ready for the restart then on lap 12 of the 20. Matt Newson's got it all to do again, this time with Smith right on his bumper. Into turns one and two, they go. Matt Newson has got to get his foot down here in the Mark Sargent car. I'll freely admit I've no idea who's third at this stage, it's all about these two up front. Pack has been so shaken up behind by all the pile-ups, I'm not sure who's in third, it's certainly not John Dowson, he's pulling up there in 94. 
Mark Woodhull fighting away with uh, the 463 of uh, James Morris there. Ricky Wilson behind them. I think it's Mark Gilbank still in third place, possibly in the 21 in the traffic somewhere. Dan Johnson attacking Danny Wayman and rides up over his front end. Danny Wayman and Dan Johnson. Uh, Johnson nearly rolls it. Danny Wayman nearly gets squashed. He's been on the receiving end all day long. 169 Billy Johnson's now going to be fired into him and Wayman nearly spins again. Wayman family in trouble in this one after Junior Wayman was out early on. We're into the final quarter almost of this British Championship race now, and it's just between the two up front. Danny Wayman has set a succession of fastest laps so far, trying to fight his way back into the top ten. He's ahead of Joe Booth, and the 3-1-3 there, which is Carl Roberts. Matt Newsom now does the fastest lap of the race at a 16.285 knows he's got to try and pull away and get away from the range of Stuart Smith's front bumper because Smith will go for everything in the closing stages here. He's not getting away quite enough at the moment. They lap Billy Johnson down the back straight there. It's just between Newson and Smith for the British Championship 2018. Is Matt Newson going to finally win the major title that has eluded him through his career so far? He began racing in 2003 but has uh, yet to win one of the major titles into turns three and four he comes. He's got Nigel Harry ahead of him there in 45. He'll be hoping the back markers don't get in his way. Across the line to start lap 19. He's got to make up a little bit more space here. I don't think he's quite clear of Stuart Smith. He'll try and put a back marker between himself and the silver-roofed car behind him. Coming round to start the final lap then. Matt Newson versus Stuart Smith for the 2018 British Championship. The right to wear the black and white checkers. Matt Newsom trying to get past Phoebe Wayman here down the back straight. She isn't quite uh, giving room there on turn two. Smith is never going to attack from there shortly. Oh, yes, he is. Here he comes. And walloped. They both go out. They both go out. Now, have they made up enough advantage? Smith gets going again first around the outside. And I think he's going to do it. Smith comes through and he takes the flag. He's won it. An incredible finish. Well, the advantage the two of them had built up over everybody else was enough for Smith to get going again first. And he wins the British Championship. Matt Newson in the fence. What has Matt Newson got to do to win a championship race? He is fated in all of them. He thought he had that one. Smith came from miles back. An incredible last spend lunge. He nearly went over the infield in doing so. And he has done it and he's British champion. Let's look back from Matt Newson's car. He thought he had it once. Smith comes from way back. That was a kamikaze move. Wallops them both into the fence. And it's Smith who gets going first. You have to feel for Matt Newson there, and he ends up down in seventh place. Stuart Smith, the winner, five seconds clear, even with that last spin move ahead of Mark Gilbank. Dan Johnson amazingly recovering the third place ahead of Joe Booth. Then James Morris, Frankie JJ, Newson, Woodhull, Danny Wayman, and Ricky Wilson, the top ten. 14 cars finished. Stuart Smith got the fastest lap and the British Championship. 390, Stuart Smith Jr. Here we are, British Champion 2018. Yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> um, well, what can I say? I just I said I was going to do my job, and I was all race. Um, maybe should have took a chance early on and took, put Matt out, because he did have good pace. The last bend was certainly something I've never done before. You know, you leave it all on and just hope you hit something. Yeah, that was it. That was, that was do or die for definite. But it looked like early on in the race, you'd set your car up for the end of the race rather than the beginning. Yeah. Definitely, um, but I think it did help that they, they watered it especially uh, wet, the track was especially wet, um, which changes the dynamics, but well, whatever, it doesn't matter now, does it? I'm, I'm British champion, so. And it was a bit of a controversial start, really. Matt did get away quick, and everyone was wondering, will he get dot for this at the end? But in the end, you decided that. Yeah, I was going around thinking, you know, if, if the job were right, they should really have docked him at the end because he did jump the start at the start. So, uh, you know, I, I know that the, the steward doesn't really have any balls, so I had to take it into my own hands and do it. So that's what I did. <laughs> that's it. Sort it out on the track. Worry about it later. Yeah. Well done. You're Thank the 2018 you. British champion. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Premier Sports. This is a Brisker Formula One World Championship. And I am starting on pole position. My name's Stuart Smith, 390, and I am going to be world champion. We are moments away then from the biggest race of the stock car racing season. The contenders are on the grid. 
all ready for the greatest race in short oval racing in the world, the Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Championship of the World for 2018. Most famous words in motorsport herald the V8 engines into life. Firework display heralds the drivers for the World Championship for 2018. Let's run you through the grid then ahead of this 25 lap race. The front row 390 Stuart Smith and 217 Lee Fairhurst. On the second row, number four Dan Johnson, 84 Tom Harris. The third row, the first of the overseas drivers, H400 Roy Masson and H217 Ron Cronda. On the fourth row, 21 Mark Gilbank and 445 defending champion Nigel Green. The fifth row, 37 Chris Cowley and 197 of Ryan Harrison. On the sixth row, NZ2 Adam Joblin, the first of the New Zealanders, and B197 Belgians and Jordi Lemons. The seventh row is 175 Carl Hawkins, 515 Junior Wayneman. On the eighth row, 207 of Ben Herdman, 166 of Bobby Griffin. The ninth row, 195 Harman Sveva and H380 of Christian Weinberg. The tenth row, 372 Colin Goodswin and 259 Paul Hines. Row 11, 94 John Dowson Jr., treble five Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. On row 12, NZ1 of uh, William Humphreys and H228 Jan Roloff Bibenga. The 13th row, 12 Michael Scriven and 101 Tristan Jackson. The 14th row, 11 Neil Scriven, 502 Ricky Wilson. On row 15, the two uh, consolation semi final qualifiers, 16 Matt Newson and 172 Mickey Randall. The 16th row, NZ58 Peter Bengtsson and H22 Lou Vobers. And then three more Dutchmen at the back, H38 Bart Koopmans, H6 of Gert Jan Keitzer and H12 Evert Vandenberg. Those are the 37 contenders for the World Championship title of 2018 here at Skegness Raceway. Under the floodlights, this will be a 25 lap race truly magnificent setting for the world final for 2018. 390 Stuart Smith, the British champion and national points champion on pole. 217 Lee Fairhurst, who won the world final in 2012 here at Skegness, starts alongside him. Tension beginning to mount then as they come round towards the green flag. It looks like they're going to be unleashed this time. Let's get ready to rumble with the world final. The green flag waves. And here we go, 390, Stuart Smith leads him off, Lee Fairhurst lunges at him into the first turn, Tom Harris is up behind them, he's going to try and go up the inside to take the lead as they go down the back straight, Harris takes the lead from Fairhurst, Fairhurst lunges in a kamikaze attack, Harris is sent out into the wall on turns three and four, well who's that given the lead to then, we'll pick up the leaders in a moment, I think most other drivers have got round the first lap but not Adam Joblin, he gets fired wide wallop into the back of Ron Cronda, I think they're going to be the first retirements. It's Stuart Smith who has held his lead ahead of Dan Johnson in second place. OK, the race settling in now. No first turn mass pile-up, as we've seen in recent years. It's Smith from Johnson. Roy Marson, the Dutchman, in third ahead of Nigel Green. A couple of spinners in the midfield. Somebody slowing up there. I think that's uh, Peter Bengston, the New Zealander, with a puncher. On board with Adam Joblin. Another New Zealander as Ricky Wilson in 502 gets spun out by Colin Goodswin in 372. Roy Marson well up there in third place ahead of the reigning world champion Nigel Green. We're on board with Junior Wayman. He didn't get the best of starts. A little further back in the pack at the moment. Oh, and there's somebody in the middle of the track and Wayman's hit him. And more problems down the home straight. That's Marson getting caught up with Ricky Wilson. So that's dropped Roy Marson out of third place. He'll come under fire from Tom Harris, who's on a recovery drive. Amazingly, he's escaped without damage after that big wallop on the first turn. On the first lap, I should say, at turn three, Ricky Wilson in 5.02 is out of the race. So a few casualties early on. Your leader is Stuart Smith in 3.90. He's in heavy back marker traffic at the moment. Second is Jan Johnson. Lee Fairhurst in 2.17. He's third ahead of Nigel Green. On board with Stuart Smith looking back. That's what he intends to be doing to all his opposition throughout this race. He's already extending his lead over Dan Johnson in second place. Here's a battle between the 84 of Tom Harris and the 515 of Junior Wayman. Both of the former world champions, they're battling for fifth place at the moment. Nigel Green and Lee Fairhurst ahead of them fighting for third position. Roy Marson, after running third in the early laps, is out of the race. Nigel Green, I think, has got through into third. Yes, he's ahead of Lee Fairhurst. It's still Smith that leads the way from Johnson. As Frankie Wayman Jr. gets the bumper in on Tom Harris, moving through or trying to into fifth position. 
race settling down now as it approaches half distance. A very fast and furious world final so far. Stuart Smith surviving the first bend attack from Lee Fairhurst. It's Smith who leads from Johnson, Green, Fairhurst, Junior Wayman, Tom Harris, Ryan Harrison in behind them in seven. Catch a glimpse of Ryan there, lapping Colin Goodswin in 3.72. And Stuart Smith out in front in 3.90. He's already won the British Championship this year. He's the reigning national points champion, world champion, 11 years ago. And he had a second here at Skegness on board with Tom Harris. Chasing Lee Fairhurst for fourth place. Goes for the outside, down the straight there. They're side by side on the run through the turn. Being moved wide there, both of them. And that's Junior Wayman. He's gone through on the inside up into four. Two places gained in his new car in a single turn. Debuted that car in Holland at the... Uh, Gold Cup, which was won by Roy Masson, but he's out of the race. First three have got away slightly, Smith, Johnson and Green. Stuart Smith in the back markers, on board with Nigel Green, trying to attack Dan Johnson for second place. Nigel Green, the reigning world champion, on that hip switch last year, lapping Tristan Jackson, making his world final debut in car 101. Also about to be lapped is the only Belgian on the grid, Jordi Lemons in the 197 car, two 197s in this race of course, the other being Ryan Harrison. Stuart Smith continues to lead. Johnson under fire now from Green for that second place. On board with Ryan Harrison a little further back, bashing goes the bumper on Mickey Randall. And Nigel Green does the same thing at the same time to Dan Johnson, he's going through into second place. Green up to second, now down to business of trying to catch Stuart Smith out in front. Dan Johnson in third place, the former national points and European champion. Nigel Green, the current European and world champion. Then it's Tom Harris in the 84 car, up into fourth, I think, ahead of Lee Fairhurst now. Their battle for fourth place intensifying as uh, Ryan Harrison puts the bumper in fire as uh, somebody there towards the wall, couldn't tell who that was. Ryan Harrison driving in his usual style, tends to try to win races as the last car still moving a lot of the time. I don't think that's quite going to work in the world final, though. Pulling off there, one of the uh, overseas drivers out of the race. Right to the final five laps. It's been a very rapid world final indeed. Stuart Smith out in front. And it looks as though he has now done enough for the second world title of his career. Further back in the order, Junior Wayman has fought his way through into fourth place, trying to catch the uh, cars ahead of him, Lee Fairhurst. I think has dropped out in uh, 217. Yes, he has. We're on board with Tom Harris. He's in uh, fifth position. The fire from uh, Ryan Harrison shortly been lost. Lee Fairhurst from this midfield battle. Junior Wayman ahead of us. But Stuart Smith is heading for his second world title. It's going to be gold, silver, and black and white. Mickey Randall across the front of him there. A late scare for Stuart Smith. He survives it. Less than two laps to go now. But the man from Rochdale in Lancashire won the world title in uh, 2007 on the shale at King's Lynn. Son of the greatest stock car driver of all time, Stuart Smith Sr., his brother Andy, also a multiple world champion. He's on his last lap now for the second time in his career. Stuart Smith, 3-9-0, is world stock car champion. The fireworks erupt as he crosses the line. Nigel Green takes second, Dan Johnson in third. Congratulations to Stuart Smith in 3-9-0. Champion of the world. A barrage of fireworks from the infield. Absolutely wonderful scenes here at Skegness Raceway. What a show they have put on. This year's world final meeting and congratulations to Stuart Smith leading virtually all the way. He only briefly lost the lead on the first lap to Tom Harris and then totally dominated this race, taking the chequered flag in style. Nigel Green second, Dan Johnson taking third. We'll confirm the rest of the results shortly. Absolutely wonderful, uh, fast-paced world final, certainly one of the quickest world finals I can remember. No yellow flags, no major incidents, no first-turn pile-up, which is unusual in world finals. The uh, Result to be confirmed in just a second, but Stuart Smith, first of all, will cut loose with donuts on the turn. That silver and black and white roof will soon be gold. Absolutely wonderful drive, inch perfect from Stuart Smith, and that silences any critics who said his tarmac form was dipping slightly. 
Stuart Smith the winner by 1.8 seconds ahead of Nigel Green with Dan Johnson taking third place. Junior Wayneman coming through for fourth ahead of Tom Harris and Ryan Harrison. Matt Newson from the back made it up to seventh. Top overseas driver home was Harman Svever in eighth place. Then Paul Hines and Christian Weinberg rounding out the first ten. Total of 23 of the 37 starters finished that one. Stuart Smith also got the fastest lap. 390, Stuart Smith, number one now, world champion. Yeah, he's just unbelievable. It really is. Um, you know, there's, con there's been confident and there's been sensible as well. <laughs> I got, when I got in the front, I realised uh, there were nobody catching me. I weren't really watching my mirror, but you know, it was the longest race in the world. That, and uh, I know I've won it before, but this is just so overwhelming. It's like winning for the first time. And, uh, oh. What it's took to get here is just immense. I know it's, it's 11 years since I last won it. It just seems a lifetime ago. And, but I've got my little boy and my little girl and my wife and, and the team. And we've done it. I've done it for all them, not me, you know. And sponsors as well, you know. And everybody said your tarmac car wasn't quick enough, but boy, yeah. they didn't catch it. Well, this is it. You know what I mean? I've said it before. The top drivers in the sport, in the history you look, back in the history and, and they've won ch major championships when they've not had the fastest car they've made things work and I feel maybe I might not have had the fastest car but I no, was just driving my socks off you know Dr just driving the wheels off the car and oh I'm right, so well, happy you, well we think you've got a trophy to go and collect and we'll just say it again yeah. for one last time world champion thank you sounds brilliant <laughs> Congratulations then to a clearly very emotional Stuart Smith, world champion for the second time, continuing his legacy of stock car racing in his family. The man from Lancashire will wear the gold roof with pride for the second time in his career.